we're back with another edition of the CHL Top 10 Show. As always, my name is Scott Van Kuna, and today I was lucky enough to talk to two players eligible for the 2024 NHL Draft in the Sioux's Owen Allard and Bay Como's Justin Poirier. Sioux Greyhound forward Owen Allard was a surprise name listed amongst the 28 CHL players invited to Team Canada's selection camp. The 19-year-old is getting noticed after missing all but 14 games last season as he recovered from shoulder surgery. We talk about getting invited to Team Canada's camp, what type of player he is, the grind of a six-month post-surgery recovery, how the Greyhounds have improved this season after missing the playoffs for the first time since 2012 last year, and growing up in a hockey family. Here's Owen Allard. Joining me today from the fifth-ranked team in the CHL Top 10 rankings, it's Sue Greyhounds forward Owen Allard. Owen, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, thank you. Yeah, super happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, really uh, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I know you guys were big OT win on the road in Sudbury last night. It must have been a late night for you. What time did you guys get up today? Yeah, I mean, it was a late night. We got in real late. Last night was probably like 2.30. So, uh, yeah, we got a nice sleep in today. Uh, Coach Dean put practice to uh, the afternoon. So, probably got up at like, you know, 12.30, something like that. Uh, rest is super important. So, yeah, got up around that time. Obviously, uh, the Wolves play in the Eastern Conference. You guys are in the Western Conference. But proximity-wise, you know, they're a rival, a northern rival with you guys. Is there a team in the OHL that you just love to beat? Yeah, I mean, this year, I think uh, Saginaw is definitely on that list. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, with them getting the Memorial Cup and uh, us getting passed up on it, I think uh, Saginaw has definitely been on our list. And, uh, yeah, I mean, every time you play them, it just kind of feels like a playoff game. So, I think, yeah, them and uh, probably a couple other teams like Sudbury, that northern rivalry. So uh, I'd probably say those two teams. And how nice is it to have had uh, the three games against Saginaw already and, and be able to show everybody that, you know, you guys are, are right there with, with the Memorial Cup hosts? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been great. I mean, uh, just to get a taste of kind of their play style and stuff, I think it's really good for our team kind of see where we're at compared to a Memorial Cup, uh, Cup uh, team. So I think if we uh, do a good job against them, uh, maybe helps us to add on a couple players and maybe uh, make some acquisitions here over the deadline, and, you know, take a run at them uh, going forward. Always, uh, always fun to end a 10 game winning streak too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was great to snap the streak. All right. Well, I wanted to congratulate you on, uh, on getting invited to team Canada's uh, selection camp. Uh, were you surprised? Um, what, what was your reaction when you heard the news? Yeah. I mean, I was pretty uh, surprised. I mean, uh, especially being an undrafted forward. I mean, you really don't expect to be invited to these kind of events. Uh, you see a lot of first round picks, sign guys to the NHL. So, I mean, just, uh, you know, get the call from the head coach on the Tang was like super special. Um, I'm just super proud. And uh, yeah, honestly, I really got nothing to lose going in there. So I'm just going to, you know, try to do my best, work my hardest and uh, yeah, try to make their team. Yeah. Like you said, not, not too often that an undrafted player that, isn't first year draft eligible gets invited this year. There's yourself and, and Marcus Vitacek. Did, did Alan say anything to you about what he wanted to see from you in camp? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, he was really preaching that their team's built on identity this year and that's kind of how they're, that's how they're going to win the gold medal. I mean, uh, I think uh, my speed's definitely something that attracts a lot of, you know, coaches and uh, scouts. So I think just my speed and physicality will be a great add to that team and my work ethic and compete. So, uh, you know, I might not be like the most skilled guy or anything like that or putting up points, but I think I can play that bottom role and, uh, you know, bring the energy for the boys. And, uh, you know, I think I'm also pretty good on the PK. So just to bring those attributes, I think would be a, a great add to the team. You can also fill the net and, and, and rack up points, but, but we all know that Team Canada does love, they love their top six and they love their bottom six, but you got to be able to play up and down the lineup. So how important is that for you as a guy who can play anywhere in the lineup really yeah for sure I mean I think it's important I mean like you said I'm um, uh, I can put the puck into that so I think you know maybe if I get moved up uh, on the top or lines I mean that'd be good um, but I also think just uh, my 200 foot game and my uh, two-way plays really is what's you know uh, allowed me to have success at the OHL level and uh, you know get invited to these uh, type of events so um, yeah I think I just gotta you know stick to my game stick to my strengths and uh, good things will come yeah, one of 28 CHLers uh, invited to the camp with Owen Beck being the only returning guy there. So lots of uh, spots up for grabs. Um, I don't, I don't want to make this 
sound like an insult, but outside of the the OHL and um, you're a bit of a, an unknown, right? As an undrafted guy. So, so maybe for the, the fans in, in Quebec and, and uh, the Western province provinces, um, you know, you, you said your speed and you're tenacious, but what kind of a player are you? Who do you kind of compare your game to at the NHL level? Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I think uh, my strengths are my speed and uh, my physicality and my compete level, but uh, I really try to look at guys like Val Nachushkin from uh, the Colorado avalanche, you know, a bigger guy that uh, gets around pretty well and competes. And, you know, he's got that scoring touch too, that you mentioned. So I think uh, guys like that, um, but yeah, to anyone who doesn't really know my game, I know uh, I'm on draft and stuff like that, but yeah, just preaching my, my, uh, my speed and my uh, physicality, I think, especially too on that Olympic size ice, I think that'll be, uh, you know, strength for me. And uh, yeah, hopefully I show that at camp. Do you, do you kind of relish the, the underdog mentality heading into this? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's great. Um, like I uh, said before, I mean, I really got nothing to lose here. I'm undrafted. So uh, I just to be invited is a huge honor. I mean, uh, so just to go in there and just do my thing, I think would be awesome. Yeah, I think like, uh, like you said, being undrafted, it's it's always something special. I mean, to compete with these guys, their first round picks and, you know, I've played NHL games, it's, it's going to be unreal. And I really can't wait for it. As an Ottawa area guy, nice to see a uh a quartet of HEO boys joining you there in camp with uh, Bonk and Donovan and Lamaru. Yeah. I mean, it's awesome. I played with uh, Dono uh, growing up and uh, my minor midget year of uh, super happy when I saw um, him get named to the list as well. And uh, I know uh, Oliver as well, a little bit. Um, he played a couple games up with me and uh, minor hockey and stuff too. So yeah, uh, really tremendous players. Uh, they're all uh, super, uh, super talented. I wish them all the best at camp. Well, let's let's get to you a little bit here, because like I said, some people might not aren't as familiar with you. But last year, you you missed the majority of the season about I think it was about 54 games that you missed because of um, shoulder surgery. So we'll get we'll get to that. And well, let's let's start with that. Like, how were you able throughout that? It must have been tough having to watch the team last year, especially struggling the way they did last year to not be able to be out there how how did you kind of stay connected to the team throughout that recovery process yeah I mean uh, it was really tough mentally um, to stay connected to the team I was just you know chatting with the guys lots of FaceTime calls I was also watching their games lots online uh, it was too bad I live so far from the Sioux I couldn't really go up and visit much um, but I was always watching on TV I'm um, and always uh, cheering the boys on but yeah it was uh, it was super tough I mean uh, you really hope nothing like that happens to any players you're out for six months and you're watching your team on the sidelines it's it's really hard and especially uh with the struggles they had a, it's a lot of close games I mean a lot of overtime I think we had like 16 overtime losses so uh just to see those games so close um maybe if I was there I could be a difference maker but you know I was uh I was super happy I mean I think everything happens for a reason uh that shoulder injury I just yeah try to stay uh day by day and to get better and uh be positive with it so I think now looking back at it, it's uh, probably a good thing it happened. I mean, uh, you see the success I'm having right now with, you know, being invited and stuff. So maybe if things were different, this wouldn't happen. So yeah, just super grateful for everything. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it was an unfortunate injury, but yeah, like I said, I think everything, everything happens for a reason. So. Well, obviously you're positive now, um, but, and, and you said you tried to do things to, to stay positive throughout that, you know, six month layoff. What types of things did you do to stay positive and how did you stay active in that time? Yeah, I think just day by day, like getting all my physio done. I uh, had uh, great doctors around me. Uh, Evolution Physiotherapy in Canada uh, really treated me great. I was in there pretty much every day working with uh, Alan Hicks, my physiotherapist. So he was great to me. He was, you know, just cheering me on, like telling me he's seen it before with, with lots of athletes. And, uh, you know, it's a tough injury. But like I said, if you stay at it, you uh, you get past these things. So. I think just my family was huge for me too, that moral support. Uh, my dad's uh, worked with lots of NHL athletes in his, in his day. So he knows what it takes, you know, to get better and uh, to be a pro. So this is really like my first step of uh, experiencing an injury. So to, uh, I think a big part of just like having an injury is like knowing how to deal with it. So I think uh, it was meant for me to happen. It's, it's better to have it earlier uh, in your career than later. So yeah, I'm just uh, grateful for uh, everyone, my family, everyone around me, my agent, my physiotherapist and stuff like that. So you got into the final um, 14 games of the year. 
how did you feel when you got back into that after after missing so much time? Yeah, I mean, definitely it was it was really challenging. You come back from uh, a long stretch of not playing, and uh, you know you're kind of timid going in the corners and stuff. Like, kind of you got to trust your shoulder. I was also wearing like a shoulder brace, which wasn't it wasn't really too too comfortable. So I don't know. I didn't to be honest. I really didn't like feel that great coming back. But uh, you know, as uh, as the summer came on, I was starting to feel uh, back to normal, back to full strength. So I think that's been a huge thing. Just the summer training I put in and, uh, you know, got more comfortable with the shoulder and, you know, it feels great now, like back to normal. So, uh, yeah, it's been great this season. Uh, and yeah, just, uh, super happy the way it's turned out. At what point was it that you, you know, you started to just stop thinking about the shoulder when you start, when you were playing again, was it in the summer? Was it the end of last year or was it, you know, partway through the the start of this year? Yeah, honestly, I think it was in the summertime. Uh, I was training up at uh, in Aurora with Gary Roberts, and uh, we were doing lots of scrimmages and stuff. So I felt really comfortable with it um, during then. So I knew that if I was comfortable there, that leading into training camp in the Sioux and in the season, I'd feel even more comfortable. So, yeah, it's held up really nice. And, uh, yeah, super happy for it. Uh, and and you, uh, you went to a dev camp this summer as well? Yeah, I did. Uh, I attended uh, the Colorado Avalanches um, rookie camp and development camp. So, uh, yeah, it was re- it was really fun. It was good to experience, uh, you know, that kind of taste of pro hockey and stuff like that. I mean, you're surrounded by lots of great coaching staff and players. You guys have played games in the National Hockey League. So it's always exciting to, you know, test your skills and see kind of where you're at at that level. So yeah, I think it was great for my development going into uh, this year, you know, uh, you get to play rookie tournaments and stuff. You're playing other prospect pools. Um, so, yeah, it was super fun. And, uh, yeah, it was good to see where I was at going into the season. Obviously, you know, this year you're out to to prove that you deserve to be drafted this year and and go on and win an OHL championship and head to the Memorial Cup and hopefully earn a spot on Team Canada. Um, how do you, uh, you know, going through what you've gone through so far, you know, in such early in your career, how do you help the younger guys on your team, like the, you know, like Martin and Hayes, who are, you know, first year rookies coming in and, and, you know, just help them be prepared and deal with the highs and lows of OHL hockey. Yeah. I mean, for those guys coming in, they're two extremely talented players. Uh, They're both really young kids, but they got bright futures. I think uh, just being an older guy, you just got to preach to them that, you know, there are highs and lows of playing in the OHL. Um, But I mean, yeah, I think uh, our older group has done a good job, you know, uh, bringing them along and, uh, you know, teaching them every day, like practice habits, stuff like that, just how to be like a, like a pro. And honestly, we've got great guys. you got Bryce McConnell Barker signing the New York Rangers, our captain. He's teaching these guys, you know, how to play, how to be a good person and, you know, be a good player overall. So I think if, uh, you know, everyone's on the same boat coming in, older guy, younger guy, will have a great chance to win this year and uh, do great things with this team. Well, you guys are currently second in the OHL behind the third ranked team in the in the CHL top 10, which is the Kitchener Rangers. It seems like from the outside anyway, it's a total team effort top to bottom with the with the Greyhounds this year. You guys don't have one player in the top 10 and scoring. Um, you know, what type of what type of team are you guys this year? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I think we can kind of compare ourselves to the Vegas Golden Knights last year. Our coach was actually going over stats and uh I believe there's only one guy, Jack Geico, who is over a point per game on their team. So, you know, I think like uh, depth is a huge thing if you want to win in this league. Uh, we don't really have like that superstar caliber player, but I think we do have lots of good players. So I think if you round that out, it turns out to be better than, you know, what some teams have up front, like that superstar power, that three or four superstars on each team. So, yeah, I think we're a really competitive team. We, uh, I think every, every team in the league knows that we're the fastest team in the league and we're super skilled. I mean, We've made some great accusations. We get, you know, one of the best overagers in the league, Jack Beck, coming from the Ottawa 67. So I think that was a huge ad for us. Um, yeah, like, honestly, uh, our team's built on speed, uh, work ethic, compete, and skill. So I think if we do that all season long, we can't be stopped. I know uh, I know a bunch of people up in the Sioux, and, and I know I know your GM, Kyle Raft, is fairly well. And I know that nobody is happy missing the playoffs, and, and last year was the first time since 2012. So, you know, you, you, you named some additions there and back you, obviously you got Karki, uh, who's having an incredible season. We'll get to him in a second. Yeah. Um, you know, you're healthy this year. What's, what's the main difference from this year's team 
to last year's team? Is it just that you guys are healthy or the, the few additions a year older? What would you say it is? Yeah, I would definitely say, definitely say a bit of both. I mean, uh, we definitely uh, missing the playoffs last year. Uh, we had a long off season. So I think guys really took it seriously, got in the gym and really dialed it in. So, and obviously, like you mentioned, we get uh, additions like uh, our two car. I mean, a world-class player. He's uh, could put the puck in the net, obviously uh, drafted pick to the NHL. So getting him and guys like Jack back and, uh, you know, I think a big one too is Charlie Shankle being uh, being back from his injury last year with his broken wrist. So uh, I think, yeah, just honestly, we uh, not making the playoffs left a bad taste in our mouth, and we wanted uh, to prove people that you know we will make the playoffs this year in the Sioux, and that we will bring a championship team to the city. So yeah, I think honestly too, our locker room's uh, exceptional. Uh, everyone's getting along. Uh, our younger guys are getting along with our older guys. We're really created a brotherhood here. So I think that goes a long way. Well, let's, let's start with, let's start with Karki there, because like you mentioned, he's a Vegas prospect. He's leading all CHL defenders with 16 goals. How impressed have you been with him and his transition from, you know, playing in Finland to, to come into the Sioux and just fitting in so seamlessly with you guys? Yeah. I mean, he's been really exceptional for us. Uh, He's a really good player, obviously super skilled. He's got that, that shot that everyone uh, talks about. He can bury the puck. So he's been huge for us. He's uh, not only a, a good player on the ice, so he's an un unreal person, uh, super great guy. Uh, yeah. He's made a great transition. I know it's harder for some uh, European players to come over to the OHL, but he's really done a, a great job and we're super lucky and fortunate to have him on the squad this year. And, and like you mentioned, Charlie Schenkel, your goalie missed some time last year. It seems like he just keeps getting better as the season goes on, including last uh, your last game on Wednesday night with a with a couple of ten bell saves there as well. How how much better have you seen? Like how much better has he looked recently? You know, this year compared to last year, even. Yeah, I mean, Shanks has been a beast for us. Uh, he's I think he should have got drafted last year. He's, I mean, he's such a great goalie, uh, super tall, lengthy. I mean, he makes big stops for us, and I think that's a big part of our success this year. And like you said, I think he keeps getting better every game. So, um, you know, I think with our lineup and our goaltending, if if he stays hot and, you know, stays consistent, we'll, uh, we'll have a hard time losing games. I mean, he's great. And, uh, yeah, he's also a great person, too. He works super hard. So super happy to have that uh, type of energy in the room and uh, that goalie in net. It's, it's been huge for us. And we've touched on it a little bit with uh, with the Memorial Cup. But uh, do you, how often or do you guys talk about – you know, getting to the Memorial Cup, winning that OHL championship to to earn the invite to the Memorial Cup. And, you know, obviously uh, hosting it would have been great, but now you guys got to go through the front door to do it. Do you guys talk about that? And and has, um, you know, coach or, or uh, Rafty come in and told you guys, hey, put me in a spot to make additions to the team so that I can help you guys get to there? Yeah, I think it's definitely something that gets brought up every once in a while. I mean, uh, our team's really day by day, just focusing on getting better every day, but we don't really want to get too ahead of ourselves. But I mean, that's the end goal, really winning the uh, Memorial Cup. But uh, to get there, we got to, you know, we got to stay consistent. We got to play well. So I think, yeah, we've, if we keep doing a good job, then Rafty, I hope we'll, uh, you know, go all in for this team and for this city. So um, it's definitely uh, something that's super exciting. Uh, you want to be a part of uh a great team you know that makes a run for it so i think we just got to stay stay consistent and uh allow a cow to you know make some things happen for us and and to you know it's a great town you know the fans get really behind it it gets a bit of a bad rap right for for being you know further north um as an ottawa guy what like what would you say to the people that you know say oh it's the sioux well i mean yeah like they're completely wrong i mean i i think honestly it's the best place to play in the ohl um, the fans here are so passionate, just the organiz organization itself speaks for itself. Basically, you know, you see all the guys that have played for this organization. It's, it's really crazy actually. So, uh, and we get treated so well here. I mean, every, everything from the staff to the food, to the equipment, everything's just bottom, like top to bottom, unbelievable. So it's really, uh, that development stage to get to the NHL. And I, it's really, uh, I could see why a lot of you know, kids have made the transition so easily to the National Hockey League from here. It's, uh, yeah, top to bottom, like just a great organization. And and not to mention uh, uh, GFL Memorial Gardens, one of the nicest facilities in the OHL as well. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, our barn's great. Uh, we get lots of passionate fans every night. So uh, I know every time uh, teams come to the suits is a, a cool uh, place to play. And uh, yeah, we just want to keep this building rocking going to the playoffs. So yeah, super fortunate to uh, be playing here. Do you feel like you guys can come closer together as a team because there's not as many other things to do up there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, all the boys are super close. I mean, uh, all of our billet houses are pretty much five to 10 minutes away from each other. I know in other cities, it's it's much different than that. So yeah, pretty much all day, every day, we're always hanging out with each other. And I mean, the long road trips, you're in hotels together with the boys. So, you know, I think that's why we got such a close group. Uh, we're always together. And uh, yeah, it's super special, the brotherhood we're, uh, we're growing here. I'm... Uh... I'm in Perry Sound, so that's what uh, four hours away. I believe about four hours away. Yep. Um, you know, we've we've got snow here. It hasn't been consistently cold, but you guys have the are the outdoor rinks starting to get fired up up there? Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, there, I've seen a couple kids buzzing around on some uh, ODRs out out here in the Sioux. Um, I know sometimes uh, we have a little team practice uh, out in the ODR, so uh, we're waiting for that coming up. But yeah, it's always good to see. Uh, the kids and stuff uh, on the outdoor rinks. Awesome. Well, like you mentioned, your dad is uh, um, really, well, he's, he's worked with a lot of NHL players um, he, as a skills coach, if I'm not mistaken, is that? Yeah. 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 So what's it, what's it like growing up with a dad who's a skills coach an NHL skills coach? Uh, what, you know, what was the, what was maybe the kind of the favorite, your favorite thing that he got you to do or taught you and maybe the least favorite thing that he got you to do, you're just like, Oh, come on, dad, do I have to? Yeah, honestly, I think like probably the, the thing I appreciate the most is that how honest and hard he is on me. I mean, uh, he knows what it takes to get to the NHL level. So I think just that honesty, a parent telling you what you need to do. And if you don't do that, you're not going to make it. So I think that really turned a switch for me and my brothers as, as kids, you know, growing up and trying to chase this dream of playing in the national hockey league. He's uh He's uh, been really hard on us, but I think it's been worth it. Um, but yeah, probably one thing I didn't really like, he was uh, really preaching that uh, power skating as a kid. So, I mean, you know, I'm thankful for it now. I think it's uh, it's turned out to be uh, one of the better things he's uh, done for me. But uh, I know waking up at 6 a.m. as a, as a nine-year-old, you're always not one to touch any pucks and do skating. So, uh, but yeah, no, he's been great for me, uh, not only as a coach, but as a father. He's uh, He's been great and uh, super super appreciative for everything he's done for me. It's uh, taken me such a long way. I couldn't be happier. It's funny you say that because uh, just this morning I was up at 6 a.m. with my six-year-old at a, at a power <laughs> skated class. So um, awesome. was was there a point where, like, you you know, you kind of challenged your dad where you're like, ah, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And then, you know, something clicked where you're like, actually, no, you know what? Dad does know what he's talking about. Well, yeah, to be honest, no, I really never was the one to talk back to him. But uh <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's he knows what he's talking about, working with all these NHL players, uh, especially in Colorado. They got, you know, a lot of NHL talent there. So, uh, yeah, I never really uh, second doubted myself when he was talking to me. I always listened to him and uh, did what he asked. So, yeah, I think it's uh, it's been good for me. Ever uh, ever get to skate with any of those Colorado guys or, or talk to any of those guys, just pick their brains at all? Yeah, I mean, well um, – Gabriel Landeskog trains at uh, Gary Roberts in Aurora. So uh, I got the chance to talk to him a bit this summer. Uh, he uh, he did play in the OHL as well for the Kitchener Rangers. So uh, we had some good chats in the summer um, about the OHL and stuff. So, you know, he's a great guy and he's uh, he's awesome for the younger guys too at the college. Uh, he's great to us. So, yeah, super thankful to have those uh, that type of guy there um, in the gym and uh, on the A. So, yeah. I remember the first time I talked to him when he was with Kitchener and I couldn't believe that uh, he, he wasn't Canadian, no accent at all on him yeah, at that point. It's crazy. It's crazy. He speaks so well. Um, you know, you got two older brothers and a younger sister. Uh, how intense, and you, and you all play hockey, so, and, and at elite levels. So how intense were, you know, the mini stick games, the road hockey games, you know, outdoor rink games, how intense were they in your family? Yeah, they were crazy. I mean, uh, it's pretty much all we did was play hockey. So, uh, like you said, the mini six, the road hockey, um, everything. It was, you know, super competitive, but also just super fun. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what you want to do, playing hockey is have fun. So, I think uh, growing up, it was, yeah, pretty much 
everything, hockey all day, every day. So it was, it was super fun. Uh, super thankful for all of them. You know, my brothers have pushed me so hard and I really looked up to them growing up. So, uh, yeah, uh, couldn't be more happy to have such a, such a good siblings. Did you guys ever wreck anything? Yeah, of course. I mean, a couple holes in the wall, a couple chipped teeth, uh, here and there, but, uh, yeah, I was usually pr pretty friendly. And did you, uh, I know, I know Tristan played in, in the queue. Did you guys ever play against each other growing up at all? Uh, no, I haven't had uh, the chance to uh, play against them. I hope one day that's a goal of mine to play against them, uh, whether that's in the American league or the NHL. I mean, uh, that'd be pretty cool to be playing him and, uh, you know, give him some cheap shots here and there on the ice. But, uh, yeah, I think that's a goal of mine to, you know, play against them. And what's the what's the scouting report on on baby sister who's at uh, UConn? Yeah, I mean, uh, she's a freshman at UConn. Um, she's uh, she's a gifted player. I mean, uh, honestly, I think she's uh, she's honestly a better skater than me. She's super fast. Uh, she works super hard. I mean, uh, yeah, she's having a great season as a freshman there. She's loving her time. Um, she's doing really well. Their team's actually, uh, doing really well. They're I believe they're 11th in the country. Uh, so yeah, they're a great team. And, uh, honestly, it's great to have a sister in the, in the game. Uh, you know, she was almost uh, selected to be, uh, on team Canada, uh, last year. So yeah, I think, uh, she's just great to have and, uh, super, super happy to have a sister like that. How, how nice is it to be able to, you know, you've like, the older brothers, the younger sister, that you guys can all reach out to each other, the dad that's 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 worked in the game, to be able to, you know, lean on each other when times get tough or, you know, celebrate with each other when when times are going well. Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, you know, my uh, my siblings and parents, like I said, were a huge support cast for me when I had my injury and stuff. So, you know, when times are tough, when times are good, like you said, they're always there for me. So super thankful for them. And yeah, pretty much anything I need whenever I'm, always uh good to give my sister or brother a facetime or something just to see what's up but uh yeah we all love each other tremendously so it's uh it's super special uh the love we have for each other and for the game of hockey so yeah really happy to have those people around me now your dad uh finished his playing career started coaching uh over in france and you and your two brothers um got to play some time in France. Did you guys live over there? Did you go over there with your dad when he played and, and live over there at all? Yeah, we did. Uh, we actually lived there for five years. Um, I was super young, but uh, we did end up playing some minor hockey there. It was kind of uh, where we uh, grew the love for the game. Uh, my dad obviously coaching and uh, playing there, uh, watching him was, uh, was awesome. And then you get to strap on gates for yourself and see uh, how amazing the game of hockey is. So I think that's really where uh, my love for the game started. So yeah, um, it was awesome. I love, I love France. Uh, it's a great country and uh, yeah, super happy to have a part of my life there. So how cool was it for you to be able to go back there and, and spend the, that COVID year there and, and with, with one brother, well, I know the other, well, they spent the year before there as well. Yeah, it was super fun. I mean, uh, when I heard there was no hockey going on here uh, in the COVID year, it would have been my 16 year old year in the OHL. So I thought uh, might as well, you know, get some games in, go over to France. Uh, it was honestly, uh, it was great. I mean, uh, restrictions weren't as bad there. So I got to play and uh, obviously it's such a beautiful country. So anytime you get to go to Europe like that, it's always a, it's always a treat. So yeah, I think it was good too. You know, uh, you got that bigger ice sheet out there, you know, you get to develop some skills that, you know, you might not get over here in North America. So just the skating piece and the confidence was, was huge for me out there. And uh, yeah, it's super fun. I always remember that. Yeah. Not a, not a bad place to have to go and uh, spend a year. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. So this weekend, uh, you know, I'm not, what day are you leaving? Are you leaving on Sunday or? Yeah. On the 10th. Yeah. I fly out uh, early in the morning. So the, you guys have the France, and and the Knights this weekend, uh, what's the team have to do to, to keep climbing up in the rankings and, and keep winning? Yeah, I think we just got to stick to our game. I mean, uh, we've been uh, pretty hot lately. I think just the biggest thing is staying consistent, playing that full 60 minutes. Uh, that's what head coach John Dean's really preaching this year. Uh, so I think, yeah, just honestly, day by day and, you know, getting those habits down in practice um, and staying super detailed. So I think if we uh, come out, you know, I think we're a big four-checking team. So 
Uh, if we do that every night, no one can really handle us, our speed and our skill and our compete level. So if we do that, we'll be in good hands. Awesome. Owen, this has been great. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck at camp and, and I'll see you down in Oakville next week. Yeah, thank you. Also, just another thing to add uh, to any kids out there, uh, three things I would say uh, that's uh, really important in the game of hockey, just hard work, uh, be a good teammate, and uh, at the end of the day, just have fun. So, yeah. Awesome. Oh, and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. You too. Justin Poirier and the Baycomo Dracar have been running roughshod over the QMJHL this season. The 17-year-old leads all first-year draft eligibles with 23 goals, and the Dracar lead the entire CAHL with 25 wins in just 30 games. Justin talks to us about some sneaky additions to the Dracar this year, the keys to their success, joining the ranks of the elite teams in the CAHL, the growth in his game as a sophomore, leading the Q in goals, and following in his brother's footsteps. Here's Justin Poirier. Joining me today is the leading goal scorer for the QMJHL from the first place Baycomo Dracar. It's Justin Poirier. Justin, how are you doing today? Good, you? I'm pretty good, thanks. Uh, maybe not as good as uh, you guys are in Baycomo right now, riding your second nine-game winning streak of the season. You know, you guys are first place in the Q, the first CHL team to 25 wins, just three regulation losses, which is incredible. And this week, you guys have climbed to top spot in the CHL top 10 rankings. How are the confidence levels in Bay Como right now? Oh, uh, the confidence levels is pretty high right now. We have a special team this year, a good group of leader. We did some couple of good trade at the, the beginning of the year with the Justin Gill and Boat Brawler brother. Uh, so the atmosphere is pretty high right now in Bay Como. Well, you haven't lost back-to-back -back games yet in regulation this season. So how have you guys been able to stay so consistent night in and night out? Uh, like uh, I just said, we have a pretty good team this year, pretty good group. So just build on that, build on the loss. Uh, we know we do some uh, pretty good stuff in the loss too. So just build on that. And now, like you said, we have a like the second nine win straight. So just improve on that. And now we are first in the QMJHL. And like you said, first in the CHL top rank here uh, this week. So it's a good experience and good moment for us right now. Is it nice for you guys to get a little bit of national spotlight? Because you always see the, the bigger market teams in the queue get a lot of attention. Uh, Bay Como hasn't quite got the attention over the last couple of years. Is it nice for, for you guys and, and the, the town to, to get the national spotlight? Yeah, for sure. Uh, like, uh, like we all know, Bay Como is a small city. Uh, I think the team uh, have like now 25 years old and the, it's one of the, I think the second year, like the Bacomo is pretty good right now before Christmas. So it's pretty good for us and just roll, keep rolling on that. You've got a good mix of, of, uh, of youth. You've got some veterans. You bring in Gil, you bring in the Boilard brothers. Um, what is, what is the team identity this year? Yeah, we have a, a lot of identity. We have a power forward. We have a defensive forward, offensive forward. That's a pretty good mix for us this year. And I think that's why we are top one in uh, CHL and one in a QMGHL right now. Well, like I, like I mentioned, you know, you get Rouen, who was ranked number one at the start of the year. Halifax has been ranked number one for multiple weeks this year. Do you think you guys are starting to change the public perception about how good you guys are? You aren't trying to enter the chat you guys have now entered the chat as a serious threat in the queue no like we know like all the team that you said we are a pretty good team this year like, we don't play against Ronaldo yet but we play against Halifax and uh, we win one in uh, OT and we lost one in OT so like we know all the team we can you, you can we can play against all the team win or loss just keep working and the result will happen what was the message coming into camp this year from uh, Coach GM Gregoire? Uh, we have the we have the chance to have a pretty good team this year. Like like I said, with the the Gil and Brawler's brother, uh, we have some Julien Payet, pretty good hat too. We have a he he's pretty good now. He's on fire, so we have the chance to have a pretty good team, and that's what we do uh, right now. And and has his message? Obviously, you guys believe that you're a good team. Has his message kind of changed at all since the start of the season to take it another step forward? Um, not really, but now, like you said, I know we know we all know that we are first in the QMJHL, 
and we will stay at the the first post for ha uh, for as long as possible. So just keep keep playing that way like we like we do since the beginning of the season and good things we hop in. How close are you guys becoming as a, as a group, not only on the ice but off the ice? Uh, we are a pretty good group on the off the ice. We all the guys together, hat rink, uh, in the gym, hat school. So that's uh, the great moment uh, when we are with the boys. Do you guys have any uh, like? Do you guys like to get together, do anything outside of hockey to hang out? Yeah, sometimes we have like couple groups, like the holder and the, the younger team kids. We go help like billet brother sometimes to do some practice with the billet kid. So that's pretty good uh, moment uh, in team. Yeah. How nice is it to be able to give back to and and because it wouldn't have been long ago that you would have been one of those younger guys looking up to players like you. Yeah. Now. That's a pretty special moment, I think, for the the little kids. I remember when I was young, I practiced like I was uh, under 14, I think, team. And my brothers come with a uh, couple group, couple of guys of St. John Seed up group. So that's a pretty good uh, special moment for, for the little kid. Well, we we like we've we've mentioned Justin Gill a couple of times now. So just for you personally, I know you're playing on a line with him. You guys are the the Justin dynamic duo right now. Um, what impact has he had not only on the team but on your game? I like uh, I think I'm a uh, I like shooting the puck, and Justin Gill is a good playmaker. He brings a lot of leadership. Like we know, he lost in semifinal round in playoff last year against Halifax. So his leadership is very important for us. And uh, with with me, he's a pretty good passer, so I like to play with him. He gave it to me to pocket and shoot and score some goals. So the, we are a pretty good duo right now. How has he been able to uh, fit with the team so well so quickly? Well, like I said, he's a pretty good leader, and I think this uh, if you're a good leader, you can fit with uh, a lot of team. So that's what you do with us today, this uh, season. And then the Boilard brothers, um, a bit of a coup for you guys to get both of them. Uh, bring them in from the BCAHL. What, uh, like, you don't see that kind of production from first-year Q players that are, you know, down the, the lineup. What does that say about the depth of your team and just how impactful they've been for you guys? Yeah, they are very good. Uh, they call We call the, the broader brother the twins. Uh, they have a pretty special uh, moment to these two guys together. They are pretty good uh, offensive players, so they bring uh, a lot of good things in offense. They score some goal. One score some goals. One is a playmaker. So it's a pretty good dynamic duo. And were you familiar with them at all? I, I'm assuming you probably played some minor hockey against them in your draft year. Yeah, I play against them like Pee Wee or Bantam, and uh, I know them by by their name. So that's a pretty special moment to play with uh, these two brothers uh, this year in Bakomo. And and when coach coach brought him in, um, how much of an impact of him being from Sherbrooke as well helped to lure those guys or did he have any of you guys any of the players you know kind of calling them and say hey come play with us it's a good spot to play yeah I think like just me personal I know Raul Bullard a younger uh younger brother so I asked him this summer hey come and bake it's a pretty good team pretty good CD uh we have a we will have a pretty good team this year and I know uh, GF uh, my head coach came from Sherbrooke and the boys came from Sherbrooke too. So maybe they talk each other in the summer. So it's a pretty good hat for us uh, this year. And then, yeah, you know, obviously you had a really successful rookie campaign last year, 28 goals. Um, you've got a couple of high-end rookies on your team this year and Lampron and Seymour. How have you been able to use your experience last year to, to ease them into the league this year? I know they're not playing quite as high in the lineup, but just easing them into the transition from from U16 to the the Q. Yeah, I think they can tell us that it's uh, definitely just keep playing your game, keep playing harder. And I think both Seymour and Lampron, uh, they bring a lot of energy. They are power forward. So we don't have a lot of power forward this year. We have more like skills player or something like uh, all the boys. So with Seymour and Lampron, who can bring some energy, that's uh. We need all type of player to win a, a championship. So with these type of guy, we all know that they are 16 this year, but they bring energy and we need some energy in the, in the team. So that's perfect for us. And like I said, you're leading the queue with 23 goals in 50 games. You know, you're on pace for over 50 goals at this point. 
what's changed in your game from last year to this year? Is it just a matter of being a little bit more comfortable this year? Yeah, I think I'm more confident this year. So I just keeping shooting puck on net. We are, we never know what happened when you shoot some puck on net. Sometimes it's not an unbelievable goal or a highlight goal, but a goal, it's a goal. So just shoot on net and we never know what happened. What types of things did you work on in the off season to help prepare for this year? I think my, my speed, I think I'm, I'm more fast than last year. I think fast is one of the most key to play pro one day and I want to play pro one day. So just improve on my, my speed and just win my battles, all the, all small details like that is very important. Now you're listed at five foot eight. So uh, on the smaller side for, for hockey player wise, are there any of the smaller NHLers like Alex Dabrinkit, um who comes to mind that you look up to and, and say, see him having the success that makes you believe that you can have the success as well? Yeah, I like to, my model, I like to compare myself to Cole Caulfield. Um, Cole Caulfield is a small forward like me. Uh, it's a pretty good offensive player. He like to create some ozone play and shooting the puck. So I like to compare myself to like, like small player, like like you said, the brain cat and Cofield. Are there are there any advantages to being a little bit on the the, the smaller side? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. I, I don't really care of my size since I was young. I all I'll always be a small player. So just keep working harder and harder. Play physical. Like if, if I was a six foot three big guy, I'm not afraid and scared to go in the corner against any anyone. So just play my game. Shoot the puck play hard, play on the boat side, 200 feet, and uh, the success will come. You've been pretty pretty consistent in, in your first two seasons to date. Your your longest scoring slump, which is pretty incredible, is just seven games, and that was last last November. You're currently, if you want to call it a slump, on a four game four games without goals, which if that's a slump, then that's pretty good. But what do you what do you say to yourself um, when you haven't scored in a couple of games? To, to make sure that you don't get frustrated and, and you just keep doing the little things right? Uh, just play my game, continue to shoot some, some puck, play hard, play physical, and just be happy for the team. Like we said, we are a nine-game streak win. So uh, it's not because I don't score that I play a bad game. So just play my game, be happy for the boys and for the team for for a streak win and keep rolling on that. How much deeper – is your team this year versus last year it, offensively we'll start with because last year you had nine nine players that got double digits and goals and this year you already have seven players that are in double double digits with two more that are sitting at nine so you're going to surpass that already but how much how much more deep are you guys um like i said at the beginning we have all type of player this year like we have a energy player power forward defensive forward uh, offensive floater so if we mix all of the these type of guys so that's I think what we have why we have some success like I said we have more way more leadership with uh Jules Wallars uh nine uh, yeah and uh Justin Gill sorry for that and we have a lot of more def- defensive two two-way defensemen like uh, we have a 16 years old last year Alex Bernier and Julian I'd say who take some uh, maturity this year and we have a uh, 16 years old uh, Alex Simatier is pretty good physical defenseman. We have a good leader group again, and we have two good goal goalie t- goaltender. So well, you mentioned you mentioned your goalies, and and we'll talk about Ciarlo right now yeah. because he's having an incredible run himself with with shutouts in three straight games. How has how what changes have you seen in his game from from last year where he kind of took over as the number one to this year where now he's starting to dominate in the crease. I think for it's more confident this year. Uh, for a goalie, I think if you know you have a pretty good team in the, in front of you, it's it's easier for you to to be more focus focus on the on the game in the net. So I think that's the reason why he's uh, unbelievable this year. And what type of goalie would you say that he is? Uh, it's a uh, a pretty good goaler. I I don't really know how to describe a goalie but I know when he's in in between the net I'm I'm confident in front of a in front of him I'm not scared if you have a breakaway or something like that so that's uh that's fun to have a goalie like that yeah how nice 
is that for for you guys as the forwards or the defense that know if if you turn the puck over if you make some kind of a mistake he's there to bail you guys out yeah that's very good for us uh like you said if we we do a turnover or something like that we know we have a pretty good goalie uh behind us so we can play with more more passion more confidence and we are we are not scared to try something okay now goalies have a reputation of being a little bit we'll say kooky um you know they can have their own routines and stuff and when Ciarlo's on a run like he is right now is that do you have to avoid him at all can you approach him the same way or does like is he a guy that you don't talk to on game days or anything like that no I can I think we can see him like as usual uh, it's a pretty good funny guy so he's keep being funny with us but when it's time to get focus and go work he go all, all the way yeah you don't have to worry about you know bumping into him or something before the game like you don't have to worry about any of that stuff no I think it's a he, he's someone who likes to talking a lot with us in, a, in the warm-up so we, we just keep talking with it with him and when it's uh game time he's focused in between the pipes so he's pretty good this year what's uh What's the vibe around Bay Como right now? Like they're a pretty passionate fan base. Like you said, it's not a huge city, um, but what, you guys are obviously playing really, really well. So what are, what's it what's it like around town right now? No, it's pretty pretty special. Uh, I think I played all the ring this uh, this past two years, and Bay Como we have a pretty good special fans. They are very loud and pretty special to play in Bay Como. I have some couple friends in the other team. And all, all the time when they come in back on to play, they tell me about the fans. Like, wow, it's pretty special. They are loud. They love the team. So that's pretty special. And how much of a boost does that give to you guys in in games when they are making that noise and the crowds are full? Yeah, they give it to me. Uh, they give it to us a pretty good boost. Like we call them, it's uh, the seven player in the ice, the fans. So they are with us all the time in the win and the loss. So that's a uh, Pretty fun for us to have a pretty uh, special fan and group like that. Last year, you guys had an incredible first round playoff series against Moncton, where five of the games went into overtime, one of them into double overtime. Unfortunately, you guys ended up on the wrong end of it. But what what did you guys learn? What lessons did you guys learn from that playoff series last year, especially for you as a as a rookie in the league? Um, when you work hard. Everything can happen. Like we know, we are bottom team last year, and Moncton were pretty pretty good team last year. And like you said, five game on a seven goes in the overtime, one in double overtime. So when you work hard and play with passion and compete level, everything can happen. So on the other side of that, for heading into this year's playoffs, if you keep trending the way you are, you guys will be the higher seed. So what do you now know that you have to make sure not to do to let the lower seed make any headway with you just play the same way that we play right now before Christmas and keep keep playing like that all year long and keep playing every every guy keep playing his home game and uh, the team will have a good pretty good success when when you guys are on a run the way you have been since the start of the season and you know having the successes that you are how do you make sure that you guys stay focused and don't become complacent and just kind of go through the motions. Um, like we said, just every guy, if every guy plays his own game, um, be focused on small details. Like, like I said at the beginning, every team in this in junior league can beat everything. So, don't play a bad game against a bad team. Just play the the, the same way every game, and the, the success will come all year long. I've asked a couple of guys this um, this season who have been up in the rankings is it nice to be you know once teams look at you guys now and they see that you guys are on a winning streak and you're the top ranked in the league and and in the chl so you know you're going to get everybody's best game every night does that help you guys stay focused a little bit even just a little bit more yeah yeah for sure i think uh it's a motivation uh, like you said we are first so every night we play a game against another team. They know that we are first and we have a pretty good uh, winning streak. So they want to break that winning streak. So they will play a big game. So when another team play a big game, we need to play a better game. So work hard and play play hard. 
And for you as a, as a sniper, as a goal scorer, um, nice to be able to play against the starting goalies and, and prove yourself night in and night out and say, Hey, look, I can, I can beat everybody. Yeah. That's pretty special. Like, like I said, every time I play against a big goalie, I want to score against him because I know it's pretty good special goalie example. When I play against Halifax, I know Mathis Rousseau is one of the best goalie in the CHL right now. Probably will go at uh, World Junior Camp with Team Canada. So when I score against him, it's a honor for me. I know that if I can score against these type of goalie, I can score against uh, anyone. So, yeah. Top Prospects game is in Moncton. It'll be a couple weeks, give or take, until we uh, find out who's going to be going. But what would it mean for you to get an invite to go to the Top Prospects game in Moncton? Oh, uh, if I was invited, it's a pretty special moment. Uh, my brothers go at that uh, top prospect game in his draft here. He tell me a little bit about that game. It's a pretty special moment. It's a pretty special night. Uh, we play against a uh, top prospect in the CHL to uh, the NHL draft. So all good players. Uh, you need to improve on uh, on your small details. Be focused and play your game and good things will happen. Well, we'll play the hypothetical that you're going to get the invite. Um, is there anybody when you're looking across the, the OHL or the WHL that you are kind of looking for? I know you've played with a bunch of guys at, at the Helenko Gretzky, but are there, are there other guys that you're looking forward to playing with or against that could be there as well? Yeah, I know. Like all you, all, like you said, all the guys who I play with in the Inca Gretzky cup, I know they all, all go at the top prospect game, but, I know Beckett Seneki, who I play uh, with uh, under 17, is a pretty good player. TJ Higginla is a pretty good player, too. So I hope to see that guy's uh, had top prospect game. It's a pretty small moment to see that guy again. And obviously, we've got we've to talk about your, your brother, Jeremy, a little bit. Yeah. Um, he got off to a great start with, with the Calgary Wranglers this year. Um, how's he doing uh, in his recovery from his uh, it was a, a arm laceration, I believe? Yeah, yeah, his arm. Uh, pretty good. He just uh, restart to go at the gym right now. Uh, bad luck in the, the beginning of the season. Uh, I hope for him to who's uh, recalling the NHL soon as possible for him uh, to realize his dream. How often, uh, how often do you guys talk, um, you know, talk about hockey or do you guys not talk about hockey i'm very close to my brother i talk with him every day uh, about hockey or about family or life in general so every time i talk with him it's uh i enjoy the moment i know uh, i'm not with him right now in person he lives in calgary i live in beckham so i call him uh one time a week but i chat with him every day so i enjoy the moment every time i i text with him how much of it a, is it a benefit for you to have a brother that's gone through the QMJHL ahead of you, you know, won a Memorial Cup, played at the top prospects, did all these things, and you can lean on him for advice? Yeah, that's uh, pretty good for me. Uh, we have a four-year difference. So all the things that it's coming for me, he already did all of that. And uh, for the pro, we play in the pro right now, so he can give me to me a lot of uh, advice or some details that I need to improve on. So I can, it's uh, just a bonus for me to have a brother who realize all that type of things that I can realize me in the future. And and I'm assuming you watched the Memorial Cup when he was in it. So what was that experience like for you to watch it as as a brother, as a fan, and now you're hoping to to capture that trophy yourself? Ah, that's a pretty special moment when I was there in St. John in I think the last past two or three years. Uh, they, my brothers win the Mam Cup. I go on the ice to see the Mam Cup. Like all the the fans, uh, the crowds is a pretty special moment too. Like I said at the in the, the beginning, Bekamo have a pretty good fan, so I can't imagine if uh, Bekamo win the Mam Cup, the fans uh, how it will be, and just it's a little bit if I can say a little dream to the the biggest trophy in junior career, the Mam Cup. So I hope uh, Bekamo can uh, win that cup to, this year. What was your biggest takeaway from from watching him go through what they went through that season, and then and then putting that for you? What 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 was your biggest takeaway? Just see him enjoyed the moment. How happy is he to to win these type of game, these type of uh, trophy? So I want to realize the same. So 
I just keep focused and small details and good things will happen uh, for us. And and currently, uh, international bragging rights on your side. You've got the gold from Holenka Gretzky, and he he's got the silver. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good. Bo brother go at the under eighteen, the special moment. Uh, unbelievable experience for me and him. So we talk uh, each other about that tournament. So now we he hope for me I can go to top prospect game after uh, be invited to the World Junior because. Uh, my brother didn't not do the the world junior. In fact, he's hoped for me to realize one of the of my uh, another dream to go at the world junior. So he can give me to me uh, again some uh, details or advice to to go at the world junior. It's it's your draft year. What kind of advice did he give you about the draft? I know obviously his experience was a little bit different because of COVID. But what uh, what kind of advice did he give, or has he given you, or continues to give you? Uh, like like we all know, draft year is a big year. Just be focused on my game, play, do the easy thing, focus on small details, and don't think too much about the draft. The good things will happen if I play my game and be focused and enjoy the moment. So just have fun. Hockey is fun, so have fun and good things will happen. You guys only have four more games until the holiday break. You've got your first meeting against Bathurst this weekend, and then – Crazily enough, your fifth meeting against Shakutami already. Uh, what do you guys have to do in those games to push your streak to 11 games? Just yeah, so like we know, we play against uh, batters. It's a maritime team, so we don't play against them often. So we don't know the other team uh, very, very well. So just play her game, play hard, play physical. I think we are one of the most physical team, in the, and that's why we have a lot of success. Just play a game, and she good to me. We play against them a lot of times. I think ten or twelve times this year. So just keep playing her way, and good things will happen again. Well, four and zero against Shakutami already. Now, uh, three of those games were were one goal games. I believe one went into extra time. Um, so obviously, those have been been close. Uh, how much more intense do those games get because you've played them so much already, and will play them more throughout the year? Uh, every game is more intense. Uh, I know we are a pretty good team this year, and Chikunimi is a younger team, but the younger team work very hard. So, just we need to work hard to win. It's not because they are younger enough to. It's not a. It's a easy game. So just play your game, play hard. And and for yourself, any any plans for the holiday break? Uh, not 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 too much. Just pass some good time with my brother and family. See people I like. So that will recharge myself and be ready for another big part of a uh, second part of the season. Justin, thank you very much for joining me today. Good luck the rest of the season and then keep filling that net. Thank you. That's it for another episode of the CHL top 10 show. Thanks as always for listening and watching and make sure you like, and subscribe as we continue to chat with some of the biggest and brightest names from across the Canadian hockey league.